slide hello friends welcome to today's session we have a very short and simple but very important case for you which i would want to discuss with you uh, this is one of the very frequently asked questions in the exam and a uh, lot of time uh, we have seen this question come either as an image form or as a text form so i thought it would be a good idea to take up this uh, clinical case uh, in this uh, discussion that we are doing regularly on uh, thursday those who are joining us for the first time i would just like to let you know that uh, every thursday on our youtube channel of the doc tutorials we are doing a clinical case we call it the clinical case thursday and uh, i welcome you all to the clinical case thursday today where we are uh, uh, discussing the case uh, one clinical case uh, from the perspective of biochemistry i am dr nilesh chandra and i'll be taking you through this case and uh, let's start so in this case we have we have a 10 year old child with aggressive behavior and poor concentration this child is brought with presenting complaint of joint pain and the joint pain is associated with reduced urinary output the mother also gives the history of self mutilated behavior and states that he tends to mutilate his fingers i would like to add here that uh, similar cases uh, commonly have complaints of abdominal pain with the reduced urinary output they uh, also uh, present with some uh, abnormal movements they sometimes present with uh, biting of the lips soft tissue of the lip is bitten off by the child which is one of the alarming features with which the child is typically brought to the opd and uh, this is these these are some very very classical uh, features in this type of individuals when we work up these individuals we typically find that uh, one very stand out observation is very very severe hyperuricemia typically in the range of uh, 12 13 13.5 uh, uh, mg per uh, liter so uh, that mg per cent which is very very high considering that normally it should be in the range of uh, 6 mg per cent so for those of you who are just raring to take a go at the question i would finally say the question out loud which of the following enzymes is likely to be deficient in this child which of the enzymes is likely to be deficient in this child okay so take a guess take a guess what do you think should be the answer just take a guess all right i'll i'll show you an associated image also sometimes we get to see this image also in the question if you want you can take a look at this image very frequently this image is there in the question where you can see nibbled nibbled finger nibbled lips very serious of the lip you can see they have been nibbled and along with that along with that you can see very very clear cut bite marks bite marks on the hands you can see very clear bite marks on the hands these have been inflicted by the child himself so these are additional findings that you will come across when we are talking about the this particular case and this particular case will first coming to the question will present with the absence of the enzyme hgprts those of you who don't know i'll just like to quickly tell you that it is a case of deficiency of hgprts is not the enzyme in these cases is absent enzyme in these cases is absent not only decreased but it is absent okay all right just a second mm-hmm. all right so 
without further much ado i'll quickly go through this uh, case so like i said this uh, case is a scenario where there is absence of the enzyme hgprtase and this condition is known as the lesch nyhan syndrome this condition is known as the lesch nyhan syndrome i'm sure large number of you already know this this is a lesch nyhan syndrome okay so what what happens in lesch nyhan syndrome what are the points that you have to keep in mind when we are talking about the lesch nyhan syndrome what are the points to keep in mind so this lesch nyhan syndrome like we said is associated with the absence of the enzyme hgprtase and in this case the inheritance pattern happens to be x linked recessive so most of the patients will be male children the inheritance pattern because it is x linked recessive most of the patients will be male children and it presents with a cluster of uh, three three categories of symptoms starting with the biochemical presentation so we have a very very specific biochemical presentation which is the hyperuricemia i told you in the beginning that uric acid levels in these patients tend to be very very high so uh, these patients typically present with hyperuricemia and because uh, uh, they uh, continuously are having the high uric acid levels they are also going to have repeated episodes of gout so joint pain is one of the common features that's what we said in the beginning that joint pain is there in these patients so you have uh, the gout along with that you have the renal stones so we have what is known as the nephrolithiasis renal stones of the uric acid uric acid is getting deposited in the renal calyces and giving rise to renal stones which can cause the aneurysm if the, these stones are breaking off and coming into the ureter they can cause the pain it radiating pain can be there the renal calyces can get stretched and you can have the abdominal pain uh, which is non radiating also so common abdominal pain presentation which may or may not be radiating along with decreased urinary output in episodes where the renal uh, stones are coming out in the ureter and if it is coming and blocking uh, somewhere outside the uh, urinary tract you might even have the cases of aneurysm okay additionally after a few years these patients have deposition of uric acid around the joints this is known as tophi so tophi is the deposition of uric acid crystals around the joints deposition of uric acid around the joints this is what is known as a tophi so these are the biochemical features that you're going to see in patients of the lesch nyhan syndrome the additional features that we see in these patients are neurological very very important and characteristic neurological finding is there in these patients they tend to have mental retardation so their performance in the school is likely to be poor they will have mental retardation that is what we had said in the question that poor concentration is there which will result in poor performance in school and along with that these patients typically have dystonia not only dystonia so there you can have different types of presentation besides the dystonia you can have the acidosis some patients might have choreoacidosis some patients have balismus some patients even have the heavy balismus so various different types of neurological presentations can be there in these patients and lastly you have the neuropsychiatric presentation lastly you have the neuropsychiatric presentation in this we have two things one is aggressive behavior these patients are very very aggressive they might be suffering frequent suspension from the school because of regular quarrels they might be having a lot of fights with their siblings so they are very very aggressive and very importantly and very characteristically like we mentioned the question they have a self mutilation tendency they have a self mutilation tendency okay so the self mutilation tendency is there in these patients which we had seen in the image in the image we had seen the self mutilation tendency 
the nibbling of the fingers, nibbling of the lips, bite marks on the hand, sometimes even on the legs. All of these, all of these uh, uh, fulfill the criteria of the self mutilation. In children, the self mutilation has only one important differential diagnosis, and that would be the Lesh Nahan syndrome. Okay, in children, the very very important differential diagnosis would be the Lesh Nahan syndrome for the self mutilation. Going a little bit back and talking about this enzyme SGPRTase, how and where is it performing the physiological role? Let's take a quick look at the SGPRTase enzyme. So this SGPRTase actually stands for the hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase. As hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase. This is the HGPRTS. The HGPRTS is an important enzyme of the salvage pathway of purine synthesis. The salvage pathway is most important for the CNS. Now, what happens? Normally, in the salvage pathway, the, uh, the purines are recycled and uh, they will not go to formation of uric acid, rather, they will be recycled. But because the salvage pathway is not working properly in the CNS, most of the purines inside the CNS will go towards degradation of uric acid. So, uric acid levels will be higher. In addition, because salvage pathway is not working, there is excess production of this PRPP. And majority of this PRPP will go to the other tissues where this limitation in the synthesis of uh, the purines is not there and it results in excess production of purine. In our body, there is no mechanism to store the excess purines. So this excess purine will quickly be degraded into the uric acid. So please remember the primary primary reason for the hyperuricemia in these patients is actually the increased PRPP synthesis in the CNS. Although the salivary pathway not working and more purines going to the degradation of the uh, towards uric acid is a factor, but by far the more important factor causing the hyperuricemia is the increased PRPP synthesis inside the CNS. Also note, we said in the beginning that the enzyme HGPRTS is absent in the patients of Lesh-Nahan syndrome, right? But a lot of other cases have been seen where instead of being absent, the enzyme is merely decreased. The enzyme is there, but it is decreased in amount. And we call these conditions as the Lesh-Nahan variant. And when we say variant, obviously, the celiac in these cases is less and sometimes these Leshnan variants are also known by the name of Kelly Siegmiller syndrome. They are also known by the name of Kelly Siegmiller syndrome. In Kelly Siegmiller syndrome patients, you will have the hyperuricemia. Hyperuricemia feature will still be there, although it is less severe. But at the same time, there will be no neurological or psychiatric findings or if at all they are there they would be very very mild the neurological and neuropsychiatric findings are absent in patients of kelly sigmiller syndrome where the enzyme is not absent but decreased in amount we call these cases as leshnan variant the mental radiation is almost not there or if it is there it is very very mild the aggressive behavior is not there mutilation tendency is not there so those features would be missing in these patients and then uh, if you talk about the management in these patients, the management is mainly focused on controlling the uric acid, the allopurinol and uh, recently available drugs like rasburicase would work very well to decrease the uric acid level in, in the blood. So you can have the rasburicase or you can have the allopurinol. In addition to that, the efforts can be made for uh, control of the dystonia and uh, the uh, dystonia can be regulated by various drugs which are available. But uh, by and large, uh, treatment 
effect is not available. Only the management of the symptoms can be done to some extent. And like I said in the beginning, the inheritance pattern being X-linked recessive, most of your patients happen to be male children. Okay, so this is broadly the scenario about the Lesch Nehan syndrome. At the end, I'd just like you to go through this question and understand and correlate with the findings. See, in the findings, we said that renal stone is there, right? So in the question, it doesn't say the renal stone is there. In the question, it says the decreased urinary output is there. So you have to correlate. Similarly, in the question, it says that mental tardation is there, but in the question, it says the poor concentration is there. Okay. Then again, complaints of joint pain, whereas we said the patient has gout. So the exact terms that we mentioned are not there in the question. The findings are there. You have to correlate with the exact terms that we have mentioned. Okay. So these are some points to keep in mind when you're talking about Lechnerhan syndrome. Lechnerhan syndrome is a pretty important question. It has come repeatedly and frequently in our exam. And it is also a very interesting case to discuss. I remember uh, four years back, I was uh, working at one of the big hospitals in Delhi and we had this young uh, kid around seven years old. Uh, his uh, parents were uh, uh, working class, they were laborers and they had brought this child around uh, 4.30 in the evening to the emergency who had bitten off his left side, the lower lip, the whole of the lower lip was missing. It was a mess. The whole uh, lip was a mess. And uh, uh, they sent uh, the investigations uh, to our laboratory in uh, Bikinistry lab. At that time, they didn't have had this uh, idea thought in the mind that probably they're looking at Lesh Nehan syndrome. They were still taking the detailed history, what had happened. They, they were not able to understand and believe that uh, the child has bitten on the lip on their own. And immediately when I looked at the uric acid values, in this case, the uric acid value was, the first value that we got was 12.5. They had sent the baseline test, uh, so kidney function, liver function, CBC, uh, LFT, and the lipid profile, and the blood sugar, and the urine, all that test had come to us. And uh, immediately in the kidney function test, we saw that uric acid level was 12.5 milligram percent, which immediately uh, gave the thought in our mind, okay, is the child having some uh, specific additional problems? And when we talked to the senior resident who was looking after the case, he told uh, us about the presentation that this child has come in with the injury to the lower lip. So I asked uh, the senior resident, is it in the injury or the child has caused damage himself? So uh, the, as I said, sir, the parents are saying that the child has caused the injury himself, but it is difficult to believe that uh, such a big damage can be uh, uh, caused by the child himself. So I, I told the, the, the senior resident that, uh, look, uh, it is uh, very, very probable that the parents are telling the truth because we have the uh, correlating finding in the lab. We are looking at the value, which says that the uric acid levels are 12.5 and it is possible you're looking at a case of the lesh nahan syndrome. And then the simulation went back and took the detailed history about the abdominal pain, decreased urination, joint pains, and everything started coming out positive. So you see, the laboratory has a very important role in uh, giving you a uh, lot of time, you giving you the correct paths to work up your patients. And uh, some fascinating cases land up where uh, uh, finding out the diagnosis alone for a clinician is somewhat difficult unless he gets the correct reports from the laboratory. So in this way, the biochemistry is very, very important in today's era of evidence-based medicine. And if you are very conversant with biochemistry, a lot of clinical cases would be a brief for you. That is what I tell all my patients. Uh, pay a little bit of attention to biochemistry, correlate the values with the clinical cases, and you're going to be having a very, very comfortable boat, and you are going to have a very smooth ride. Thank you for joining uh, with me today, and take care. Uh, stay tuned, and best of luck. Bye-bye.